Hello everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week I'll be redoing one of my older Monday movies where I showed you how to create a water box using the mental ray renderer. Next week I'll be showing you how to use the submerged shader in order to add some underwater effects to that water box. So let's get started. I'm going to click on my create panel, geometry, standard primitives, box, and I'm just going to create a box somewhere in the scene. I'd say about right here, just like that. And it just needs to be kind of rectangular, tall. The next thing I need to do is convert it to an editable poly so that I can edit it. I'm going to click on the modify panel and apply an edit poly modifier because my right click menu doesn't work very well. Collapse two, perfect. And I'm going to select that top polygon on top and inset it. And that's going to set the thickness of my water box. After that, I can just extrude it down to about there I'm using my F3 toggle. And now that I'm done extruding, I'm just going to delete three of the faces. Click delete. And that's going to let me see into the water box. Once I've set this up, I'm going to click on the polygon at the very bottom. And using the move tool and shift drag, that's going to give me the geometry that I need for my water surface. And click OK. Now the box is done, but I need to fix up the water surface a little bit. And if you're feeling clever, you can patch up some of these holes. For the water surface, I'm going to apply a little bit of tessellation, kind of give me the geometry that I need to kind of get this perturbed water surface. I'm then going to apply a displace modifier. Click on displace. Click on map. And I'm going to select a, a noise map, something very simple here. Click OK. And then I'll just turn up the strength until I get the effect that I want. Let's say about there. That looks pretty good. So now that the modeling is done, we need to set up our materials. So I'm going to open up my material editor. I'm going to apply a simple gray material to the box and make sure that it's two-sided. And for the water surface, I'm going to select a new material here. Click on standard. And I'm going to select a um, glass physics phenomenon. And click OK. And click drag to apply that. Now, if you don't see those yellow materials, it means that you're not using the mental ray renderer and you'll need to switch out. So now that we have our materials set up and we have our modeling done, let's go ahead and create some lights. I'm going to click on the create panel, lighting, standard, and I'm going to select a free direct light. And that's just going to create a top down, very simple light object. I'm going to go ahead and move it above my water box because I want the light to cast through the water surface onto the bottom of the water box. And you can see right now that the light cone doesn't perfectly cover all of my water box. So I'm just going to expand it a little bit by clicking on the modify panel, directional parameters, and then expanding that hotspot. One more thing you'll want to do is make sure that you have ray trace shadows turned on. So it looks like we're all set here. Finally, we'll want to set up our render settings. So I'm going to open up the render setup panel, click on the indirect illumination tab, and turn on both caustics and global illumination. That's going to give me those caustics that I want on the bottom of the water box. One more thing you want to turn on before you go ahead and render this is all objects generate and receive caustics and GI. And that's going to make sure that both this light and the water surface are all responding properly. It's kind of a catch-all. Now that everything's set up, I'm just going to click Render. And there you have it. This is a very fast and easy way to start experimenting with caustics and render settings in 3D Studio Max's Mental Ray. One more thing to tell you before you go is that if you don't get these results, it's probably because your decay settings are off. Right here, this number. If you have too much light, you need to turn your decay settings up from 2.0, say to 2.2 or 2.5. If you don't have enough light, or if you don't see anything happen at all, try turning it down to, say, 1.6 or 1.8, and that should give you a good head start. Be sure to tune in next week where we talk about the submerged shader and how you can apply that to your newly created water box.
Thanks for tuning in to another Monday movie. You can find all of my Monday movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads on my website, www.mrbluesummers.com.